This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning. Thanks for getting up with us on this Sunday morning. I'm Tim Gordon. It is good to be back with you on a Sunday. And this morning on Sunrise, the Providence nursing strike is officially ended. But we'll tell you why their union is accusing Providence of violating Oregon law. Plus, Oregon Senate passes several bills, including one that will make it easier to lock up drug dealers, especially those dealing fentanyl. But before we get to all that, let's check in with Daisy Caballero for a look at our Saturday Sunday forecast. Sunday forecast, yes, Tim. Welcome back and good morning to all of our viewers. Taking you outside, take a look at Timberline. Beautiful start to the day. 50 degrees out here. Uh, looking a little bit closer to home. 56 degrees in the Rose City. Those winds are calm. A little bit gustier as we're looking over to our coast. Cannon Beach, 52 degrees. Now, as we're looking at satellite and radar over the last six hours, we've stayed pretty clear off the coast and along the I-5 corridor. Not so much as we're looking over east. Some of you may have woken up to maybe a sprinkle passing through as you were waking up and that might actually continue as we're looking at the second half of the day for our uh, folks over east. We'll talk more about that in that full forecast, but looking at our current temperatures right now, 50s really across the board, 53 for Hillsborough, 51 for Forest Grove. Looking down south, starting to warm up a little bit more, 56 for Salem and 52 for Kaiser. Here's a look at your headlines for the day. A very similar setup as we saw yesterday. Sunny and warm highs in the uh, 70s and a low 80s. But once again, there is potential for some thunder storms as we're looking at parts of central and eastern Oregon. I'll have more details coming up, Tim. All right. Thanks a lot, Daisy. Well, we start this half hour with the Providence nursing strike. Nearly 2000 nurses in Portland and Seaside have been on strike this week, but while the work stoppage officially ended Friday night, they're still negotiating a contract. And the nurses union has accused Providence of violating Oregon law. Thomas Schultz breaks it all down for us. After Oregon Nurses Association members called upon the Oregon Attorney General's office to investigate Providence's use of replacement nurses, Providence responded Saturday. Officials say they are disappointed ONA expects Providence to close hospitals in Portland and Seaside during a strike. But ONA officials dispute Providence's implication. Oregon Nurses Association is also not claiming that Providence is forbidden from using replacement workers during a strike. A five day strike involving 1800 nurses has ended, but union representatives and Providence officials continue to argue over contract negotiations. On Friday, ONA members sent a letter to the Oregon Attorney General asking Ellen Rosenblum to investigate Providence and strike breakers for breaking the law. They also claim Providence hired nurses from the U.S. Nursing Corporation during the five-day strike. The union referenced Oregon law stating that no employer shall knowingly utilize any professional strike breaker to replace an employee involved in a strike or lockout. It also cited another law that makes it a crime to knowingly serve as a strike breaker. When Providence uses a company like U.S. Nursing Corps, it's a way to illegally shift the balance in their favor. On Friday, Providence officials neither confirmed nor denied they hired U.S. Nursing Corporation nurses. But Saturday, they did confirm they hired from the corporation, which provides staffing during labor disputes. Companies like U.S. Nursing Corporation and Providence are fueled by corporate greed. Piazza is urging the attorney general to not allow U.S. Nursing Corporation to operate inside Oregon. The Providence officials say they would not have been able to operate hospitals without replacement nurses from U.S. Nursing Corporation. It would be incredibly challenging, if not impossible, for us to have sourced 500 nurses uh, to come here within 10 days notice for or this strike. Portland Seaside and Home Health and Hospice nurses initially decided to go on strike for higher wages, more staffing and more affordable health care. Prior to the strike, Providence officials say they offered nurses a 12% raise in the first year of a proposed contract. In the following two years, nurses would have received additional 3% raises. Officials say the contract also included bonuses of up to $2,500 and 30 additional hours of paid time off over three years. But nurses say the paid time off doesn't even cover one shift each year. Before the strike, Providence said it would shut down its Portland neonatal ICU and halt all but life or death surgeries. 
They also advise patients in need of emergency care to seek other hospitals. But the hospital system reopened the NICU and accepted transfers for higher levels of care. They say they cared for 250 patients a day during the strike. Providence Home Health made 2,000 visits to patients during the five days. As Thomas Schultz reporting, well, negotiations have been paused since June 8th. Providence and home health and hospice nurses are scheduled to continue negotiations on Tuesday. There is no time scheduled yet for negotiations with nurses at Portland and Seaside Providence hospitals. Well, Saturday, Oregon Senate passed several bills that now head to the governor's desk. A big one focused on tenant protections. It caps rent increases at 10 percent. Under the current Oregon rent stabilization law, annual rent increases are limited to seven percentage points above inflation. Well, the state's strongest bill to combat extremist activity also passed under House Bill 2572. People who engage in, con in conduct as part of a private militia group can face, face legal consequences. Opponents say this would infringe on rights to freely associate and to bear arms. The bill comes as a response to this type of activity in recent years in both Portland and Salem. And House Bill 2645 is also moving forward. This one makes it easier for police to arrest drug dealers and targets fentanyl specifically. Anyone found with one gram or more or at least five individual doses could be charged with a Class A misdemeanor. Penalties include up to a year in jail and or a fine just over $6,000. Well, despite some concerns about protests, Oregon City held its first Pride event last night. People got together for what was billed as round one of Oregon City Pride. Art Edwards takes us there. Oregon City's Pride event took over the Good Burger Shack and the Archbridge Tap House on 7th Street and the sidewalk outside. People gathered for what's billed as round one of Oregon City Pride, a first of its kind event in the city. Obviously, I'm super excited, and apparently everyone else is excited, right? <laughs> it's, it's way overdue. We're here. We're queer. We're not going anywhere, boo-boo. While the event celebrated pride in Oregon City, it was also a fundraiser for LGBTQ plus youth in Clackamas County. People at the event say it was time to have something like this. It's, it brings tears to my eyes. This place really needs it. We need diversity here. And I'm proud of Oregon City for, for allowing this to happen, and I hope there's more to come. LGBTQ folks are everywhere. We exist every day, and we need to be able to be with our peers, be celebrated for who we are, and be welcomed and safe. There had been talk that protesters would show up at the event, and organizers had received some hate mail. Oregon City Police monitored the area. Protesters did show up, but they stayed about a mile away near the Children's Theater. That was one of the original locations planned for the event. Organizers say Oregon City Pride was too large for that venue. Work is now underway for round two of Oregon City Pride in the near future. Art Edwards, KGW News. Okay, still to come on Sunrise, minimum wage is about to go up in Oregon. Why the increase may depend on where you live. And remember, you can watch Sunrise anytime you want on KGW+. All our news is on Roku and Amazon Fire. All you have to do is look for the KGW app and add us to your home screen and stream Sunrise on your schedule.